want you to turn in your Bible now to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Now, I want to talk to you uh, about developing the God kind of love. Um, we speak so much about faith. We speak so much about finances. And, uh, you know, I had asked Zubeda to share the word, and then she said to me on Friday, she said, no, you better share it. And so I went home Friday, and late at night while she was in bed, I was just sitting on the table, just looking at my Bible, and I said, Lord, what must I preach on? And he said, love. And so I find that the body of Christ is well taught on faith. You're well taught on prosperity. But we have kind of failed to teach you on the love walk. Turn to someone and say, the love walk. And today is an appropriate day to start the subject because, why? Because it's Mother's Day. And so we'll start it today and develop it because mothers are loving, right? Yes. And mothers will give to the kids even to their detriment. In other, in other words, many times you find mothers will give to their family while depriving themselves. That's love. I said, that's love. Yes. Now you get a human type of love. A human type of love is a conditional love. In other words, I will love you if you're nice to me. But here in God's Word, as we study it, it's talking about a divine type of love. It is a God type of love. Now, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit... Take note what it says. The fruit of the Spirit, the first thing he mentions is love. That is the first fruit of the Spirit, love. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You want to say it with me? Say, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. But I like the first part, and that's what I want to highlight, is the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Did you get that? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, what is so important to mention, first of all, is this. When we speak about love, Christians think they ought to pray for more love or they ought to pray for God to help them love others. That is wrong. Are you listening to me? That is wrong simply because God has already imparted to you love. He has given it to you. Are you listening to me? God has already given you love. Love is in your heart. As a new creation being, as a born-again Christian, love already dwells inside. Tell your neighbor, I have love on the inside. I have love on the inside. So you're not trying. You understand? You're not trying to get some doses, more doses of love from God. It's on the inside of your heart already. Love is already inside of you. Do you understand that? You are a child of God born out of love. Think about that. The Bible says, when you were in sin, Christ died for you. God gave you Jesus Christ. Why? So that you may say yes to Jesus and be reconciled to God. The day you said yes to God, you were born again. The day you were born again, 
Your whole nature on the inside is full of light and full of love. So you see, to pray for love is wrong. To ask God to cause you to have a greater measure of the spirit of love and to uh, function there, and it's wrong. You need to develop it. All right, let me say this. The Bible says that, let's talk about faith for a minute. The Bible says, unto every man is issued or given a measure of faith. That means you have a measure of faith already. It's on the inside of you. Now that you're born again, inside of your recreated spirit is the spirit of faith. It's on the inside already. You don't have to pray for faith. You don't have to ask God for faith. Asking God for faith is foolishness. It is bordering on unbelief. We do not ask God for faith. Because the Bible tells us, the Word of God tells us, we have a measure of faith. Now, what do we do then to to grow? We develop the measure of faith on the inside of us. In other words, if you have weak faith, as you practice faith, in other words, when situations in life come against you, when a challenge comes against you, you exercise weak faith to get strong faith. You got that? So it's by your exercising weak faith, you develop it into strong faith. You don't pray to God and ask for faith. That is contrary to the Word of God, and it borders on unbelief, ignorance of God's Word. You have faith on the inside of you. The same thing now. So how do I grow my faith? I grow my faith by practicing it. Do you understand? Oh boy, you must catch this. That's how you go from weak faith to strong faith. You practice your faith. You understand? For example, when you have flu for the first time, you run to the doctor. You have it for the second time, you may run to the chemist. You have it the third time, you may just rest in bed. By the fourth time, you lay your hands and you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. By the fifth time, you are saying, no virus is going to get a hold of me. By the sixth time, you're walking in divine health. I mean, sickness is going to come, but it's going to pass you. Why? You have developed in the God kind of faith. Same thing with love. So when you were born again, listen carefully. When you were born again, the Holy Spirit regenerated your human spirit. Now, on the inside of you, you have the nature of love. You have the nature of God on the inside. It's called the love nature of God. You understand? I mean, something on the inside compels you to do something nice for someone else. That is the love nature in action. Come on, talk to me. You come to the house of God, and uh, you can't help but to sow your offerings, to bring your tithe. When there's a pledge taken, you want to give, even out of your own need. Why? You love the work of God. When you see someone in need in your family or around you or at work and the Holy Spirit quickens you to buy them a gift, you don't know why you're doing it. But as you do it, it's the quickening of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Because, brothers and sisters, now you become a child of love. Or to put it another way, you're a love child. Mm -mm -mm. You you understand? You're a love child because God gave birth to you. Listen, 1 Peter tells us you were born of what? You were born by the Word of God, which is the incorruptible seed. 
Mm. But the Bible also tells us that God is love. So the word of God is love. Oh boy. God is love. So when he touched you, gave birth to you, you were born with a love nature. You came out, you hailed from God. And the love of God is in the inside of you. Hallelujah. You didn't say yes to God because someone compelled you. You said yes because faith grew in your heart. And you said, yes, I believe in Jesus. But when you are ushered into the kingdom of God, you're a love child. You can't help but to love. Now, you might be weak in love. Now, if you are weak in the love walk, you can develop in your love walk. But you are not lacking love. You're a product of love. You're a product of love. I said you're a product of love. It might be so that people don't like you. It might be so that the family's written you off. It might be so you scoffed at and scorned at at work. But when it comes to God, boy, He loves you. You understand that? You're going to remind yourself all the time, I'm born of love. Amen. Are you you catching what I'm saying? See, I don't care what people say about me. I know that I know that I know God loves me. You should know by now that you know that you know that you know that God loves you. It's foolish to come before God and say, Oh Lord, do you love me? He'll say, Oh foolish one, you have not read the Bible. Because He says He loves us. Do you understand that? He loves you. Nothing that you'll ever do will stop the love of God towards you. So great is His love towards you. God can't help but to love you. Now that He's rubbed that nature on the inside of you. Oh boy. You can't help but to love others. You get cross at times. You understand? But I mean, when you are squeezed, love comes out like toothpaste out of you. You know what I'm saying? You know when you go to the bathroom and uh, when the toothpaste is like kind of dwindled down, you use your two thumbs and you press it to get the last bit out? Well, when you are pressed by the circumstances of life, even if it's the last little bit, when they press you, love should come out. (laughs) You understand that? And the guys look at you and say, well, this guy is foolish because, I mean, we're trying to get to him, but he's responding like, what's wrong? Well, your nature is different to his nature. He has a nature, you know, that's different. Uh, He'll respond in a negative way. Uh, He'll react rather. You would respond with the love of God. Boy, oh boy. Now, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That means it's already functioning in you. Now, that fruit might be small. It may be even green, but it's there. If you feed it the Word of God, if you feed it sufficiently and practice it, the fruit will grow and will even ripen in your life. But it's there. It's there. I said it's there. It's hanging in your life. It is there. It just needs to be developed. Say, I have the love of God. God. Say, the love of God is on the inside of me. me. So we are born in love. In the new birth, the impartation of this love nature of God has been given to us. Hallelujah. But the spirit man needs the word of God. 
The spirit man needs the word of God, the sufficient word of God on the inside to develop that love. So you've got to feel it, the word. You understand? You've got to feel it, the word. So don't pray for love. Tell your neighbor, don't pray for love. Well, how many times, how many times when people are really pressured, and I've heard people say this, well, I'll leave my Christianity one side and I'll deal with you now. <laughs> that is wrong. You understand? That is wrong. You can't leave your Christianity one side to sort somebody because it's not for you to lay aside. It's on the inside of you. You may act foolishly, and you may act wrongly, but the love nature of God is on the inside of you. Listen, now you say, here's a very practical question. You may say, but pastor, I'm not walking in the love of God. Yes, that is true. But it's because you've imprisoned the love nature of God on the inside of you. So you've got to open the cap and let it... You, you, you understand? In other words, don't let the love nature of God be imprisoned in the inside of you. Let it out. It's part of your nature now. I said, let it out. Be kind-hearted. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Say, so I've got the love nature of God on the inside of me. Now, when your love life develops, automatically you become gentle. Automatically you become nice. Automatically you become giving. Amen? Amen. Listen, love never fails. Amen. It can't fail. It's impossible for love to fail. They took love and they crucified him. Then they buried him. And on the third day, the Bible says, love arose from the dead. So love cannot fail. People may come against you. And they may attack you. But respond in love. It cannot fail. It just cannot fail. Love never fails. Love never fails. It just can't fail. Hatred will fail. Selfishness will fail. Love never fails. Why? Why? Why can't love never fail? Simply because love is a spiritual law that has been designed by God never to fail. He's given His word on that. That till the end of the ages, love will keep on working. For all eternity, love will will keep on functioning. Do you understand? Say, love never fails. Love will dominate anything around you. It will dominate a circumstance at work. It will dominate a situation that you're having in a relationship. Boy, I tell you what, love will dominate. I'm telling you, refuse to walk in hatred. Refuse to entertain selfishness. Walk in love. It cannot fail. I said it cannot fail. I said it just cannot fail. It's not designed to fail. Now, if you take that spiritual principle of love and apply it in your heart, you cannot fail. <laughs> you, you got that? Because love cannot fail. You can't fail. Now you say, but I want to get even. It's okay. Listen, God is your defense. The Bible says God is your defense. Leave it to Him. No, but I want to take it in my own hands. Then you do not trust God. You can't say with your mouth, I trust God. Then your actions are contrary and you do the opposite. If you trust God to sort a situation between you and somebody else, listen, in human beings, relationships are the most challenging thing to deal with. Everybody comes in at work and says, well, everybody will love me. 
Then you come to church. Everybody in the church will love me. You go home. Everybody in home will love me. Translated, let me give you a wake-up call. To sober you up. You are dealing with just two kinds of people. You are dealing with people that have the nature of God and that have developed their love walk. So there are people who will love you in spite of anything. And then there's the carnal person or the person that's not saved and they cannot but function with selfishness, envy, and hatred. So you'll find those two groups of people everywhere in life. So don't be disappointed. You just focus on yourself and develop yourself in the love walk. You understand? You need to walk away from situations. Yeah. Don't, you know, <laughs> let, me, let me share this. Some fights you need to let go. Yes. There's some fights not worth fighting. Walk away from it. Well, some people say, I've said it myself some years back. Some people say, well, I cannot but speak my whole mind. It's okay if you speak your whole mind if you have a good mind. <laughs> if you say, I want to speak my whole mind, but if you have a mind that's sound, if you have a mind that's renewed by the Word of God, if you have the wisdom of God functioning in you in a great way, then if you speak your mind, that's okay. Because you will build, you will edify, you will bring together. Anything else will destroy Everything else will hurt. Everything else will cause destruction. So if you say, I want to speak my whole mind, make sure that you have a sound mind. <laughs> All right, some of you catch that tomorrow. So love will dominate anything around us. It makes us a blessing. If you're walking in love, listen to me, if you're walking in love, it will make you a blessing to people. People want to be around you. Oh boy. Some of you say, well, I don't have friends. You ought to examine yourself and see why you don't have friends. <laughs> Some people just want to connect with other people because as soon as you see, but see somebody, then you offload all of your garbage that you had for two months on their shoulders. So after a while, they kind of get depressed. And they go home and they feel, wow. And then they soon, the lights come on, and they realize that you are just no good for them. So the next time you see them walking down the street, they see you there, and they're kind of like, <laughs> why? Because you fail to be positive. You fail to be edifying. You fail to be, uh, you know what I'm saying. You need to change. Tell your neighbor, you need to change. Need to change. What do you need to change to? Let love govern you. Choose today to walk in the spirit of love. Choose today to become a blessing to people. You understand? Do you know that the supernatural, the gifts of God, they function because of love? Faith works by love. You cannot walk in the supernatural element of God without love. How can God allow that to happen? Because His whole nature is love. You understand that? You've got to develop in love. You've got to grow yourself in love. Let love govern you. Let love dominate you. Amen. That means wherever you are, you say it's hard, you can do it. Amen. Because that's the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. You say, but work is terrible, pastor. You don't understand. No, I do understand. You can make it. You can do it. You're saying, I can't do it. That's why you're failing to overcome. 
But if you get up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to work, and even though the challenge is great, I will overcome, you will overcome. I mean, if you walk in the God kind of love, if you develop the God kind of love, God will be with you always. Man, His anointing will be strong on you. When they stoned Stephen, you remember what had happened. What did they see? They stoned him and killed him. But what did they see? What did they see? They saw angels. They saw the Son of God. You understand what I'm saying? God will be with you strong. No one will ever be able to overcome you. They'll try. They'll dig a pit. They'll shut doors. But by the Holy Ghost, those doors will open again. You understand? They'll dig a pit to trap you. And they'll say, oh, listen, anyone that gets in the pit is a prophet in training. God will lift you out. Even if he had to send a band of Ishmaelites to buy you out and take you to the house of Pharaoh. In one time, you'll go from the pit to the palace. You understand? But Joseph didn't get bitter in the pit. Joseph didn't look down. Joseph looked up. You see, there's two kinds of people. Those that look down and see the mud. And those that choose to lift up their eyes into the heavens and see the stars. Choose to be a man and a woman like that. That you will pick up your head. And you will see God. And you will see the word of God. And you will see the love of God. That's going to function in your life. Because you're born of love. You're a product of love. You have the nature of love inside of you. It's part of your DNA now. The love of God. I said the love of God. Decide to be a blessing to others. Decide from today not to live for yourself. Decide that you will do things for others. Things that happened to you in the past, you will make happen you won't do the same thing to other people because that will be out of bitterness and envy. But you will be kind-hearted and do things for other people that you were deprived of. That is not your database. That is not your data bank to say, well, I missed out and people were unkind to me, so I'll be unkind to them. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. Because they did it to me. Joseph, I think it was Genesis chapter 50, when his brothers came to him, and he had the power to kill them. Yes. These were the same brothers that threw him in the pit. But Joseph turned around and he says, this is what he said to them. I think it's Genesis 50. He says, you meant it for evil. He says, but God meant it for good. So God will raise you up and he'll promote you. And he'll exalt you before your enemies. He'll exalt you. Before the people that want you to go down. But when you get up and God promotes you, don't use that for wickedness. You understand that? Don't use that for wickedness. Use that for love. Then you'll say to them, you made it for evil, but God meant it for good. Now I'm in a position to take your life or give you your life. I'm deciding to give you your life. You understand? That's a man and woman of God. That's walking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then you say, Pastor, but then who's going to balance the books? God will balance the book. One day, God gave me this revelation. He said, I'm the best chartered accountant you can get. He says, I'll balance the books. I said, but Lord, I'd like to help you balance it. And all of us get to that point. Lord, let me help you. He says, no, I'll balance it. So in your life, let God balance the books. Let him sort it out. Because you trust him now. See, he's done things for you. You were wicked before. You were selfish before. You were in darkness before. But God, through his marvelous light, brought you in. You were translated into the kingdom of God. In one minute of time, your whole nature changed. Now God wants you to function in love. Say, tell your neighbor, I decide to function in love. Now turn to John 15.
Say, I have the love of God inside of me. You have it. You have faith on the inside of you. You have love on the inside of you. You understand? Brothers and sisters, let me share this with you. You know, many times we teach you prosperity. We teach you the power of confession, confessing God's word. We teach you uh, faith. We teach you other things. But do you know all of that hinges on love? And sometimes it's not functioning in your life and you're not getting the desired result because if you really look deep down in your foundations, you have failed to walk the love walk. If today you will change that, my Lord, God will do great and marvelous things for you. You understand? Love will resurrect things in your life that was previously dead. I'm telling you, just love, just love, the spirit of love. John 15, verse number 9. Would you read with me? As the Father had loved me, so I have loved you. Now watch the tenses. Are you watching the tenses? He says, Jesus is saying, he says, as the Father, what? Had Love me. In other words, past tense, as the Father had already loved me. He says, so I am going to love you. No, he says, so have I loved you. Past tense. So it's a fact. It's a reality today that Jesus loves you. From today, never doubt that. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're up against. God loves you. Period. There's no arguments. But I'm going through the valley. He still loves you. I have a challenge. He still loves me. I'm going through things you don't understand, Pastor. He still loves you. He says so. Now you need to start resting on that love. I remind myself every day, God loves me. I say to myself every day, God is with me strong. I don't say God is with me strong. See, some of you have forgotten how to emphasize. Some of us have forgotten how to use our imagination. Imagination is good. In the previous time, before you were born again, you used your imagine, imagination for wicked things. Now use them for righteousness. Hallelujah. Just imagine God's love. Every morning as you get up, God stands and says, I love you. Amen. He says, you're going to make it this week. Amen. You're going to have a great month this month doesn't matter what comes against you, I'm with you. We'll overcome together. Hallelujah. You, you understand? Remind yourself. He says, as the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. But he says something marvelous now. He says, continue ye in my love. In other words, you have begun by saying yes. God has imparted a nature of love on the inside of you. Now he says, continue in my love. In other words, don't walk one day in love and one day out of love. He says, just continue walking in love. Every day, all the time, walk in love, walk in love. Are you understanding? He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I kept my father's commandments. And abide in His love. See, Jesus was saying, I'm abiding in the love of my Father. Brothers and sisters, today, I'm telling you, abide in the love of God. Every day, remind yourself that you are abiding in His love. God loves you strong. He's with you big. I heard a man of God say this, and I thought that was so appropriate. This is so powerful. Listen to this. He says, you know the scripture that says, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. He said, that is not a promise. He said, that's a threat. We look at, I will never leave you, 
Neither will I forsake you. We say that's a promise of God. No, that's a threat. It is. Think about it. It's a threat. God is saying, if you walk away from me, I'll come and get you. Think about what I just said. So if you backslide and get into a club, if you become a prostitute or an alcoholic, or how bad you can get, once he set his love on you, you ain't going nowhere. You can change your church to run away from the sermons God will use the preacher to get to you. He'll use that other preacher to get you. But listen to this here. God is committed to you. Yes. You know, it's like a husband over his wife. It's like a mother over its child. I mean, whether your child is wrong or right, go and do something to a child and see the mother. She's anointed to fight. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, just touch the child and see what the mother does to you. I mean, you see the hair stand right up. <laughs> Why? Because it is just an automatic response of the mother to protect that child. Go and fool around with the woman's husband. And you see those big red nails come out. <laughs> I'm going to get you now. <laughs> Why? Why? Because that wife is jealous over that husband. And vice versa, right? Now, God loves you. God's called you out. God separated you. Why? I don't know. It's called grace. Why He chose me? I don't know. It's grace. Why He chose you? I don't know. It's grace. But once he set his love and affection on you, you are not your own anymore. You just can't. You, 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 you can try to run away. He'll come out there and get you. All right? Let me go around. Let me, let me say this. That even if you run away from the things of God and from God, he'll bust you. He will. Because he's jealous over you. He's not going to share you with any... Once He got your name, He's got you down for life. God will make sure He'll be with you right to the grave. Then up to eternity. I'm telling you. Because He loves you. He's a jealous God. He loves you so much. You understand that? And sometimes you think, well, I do something wrong. Oh, why is people interested now? Oh, well, because God will move in the heart of your pastor. He'll move in the heart of the people that have oversight over you. He'll move in the heart of people at work, even on the unsaved, to speak a word to you. You say, but pastor, no. Well, he used a donkey once to speak to the prophet. The prophet, when berserk, lost his mind, and the donkey had to speak to him. Who made the donkey speak? Be careful. Maybe God will get the dog to speak to you. He would. I mean, you don't come into church anymore, doing your own thing. You'll be walking down your driveway. Maybe not in all of your senses. And the dog starts to bark. Everybody hears a bark. But he's saying to you, go to church. You fool, go to church. And then you sober up and think, is the dog speaking? <laughs> so thus the scripture is fulfilled. God used a donkey, now he uses Rover. The <laughs> point being is that you just cannot get away. You are marked. You are marked for eternity. You can run away from pastor. You can run away from the church. You can go to another church down the road. He'll get you there. Yes. It's the truth. Some people, and I was talking about preparation. I haven't forgotten my point. 
It's talking about preparation. I would prepare so nicely, like I've done today. And then God will just take me and make me say things that I don't want to say. I honestly don't want to say those things. And the Lord will provoke me to say, say this. For example, sometimes people may run away from another church and come here. Not all of you. I'm talking about just sometimes. And they say, the preacher talks about money. So we want to find a church that doesn't talk about money. So you come and sit here, pastor's preaching on faith or the love of God. Fifteen minutes into my sermon, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, say this. I say, no, Lord. He says, say this. I said, but why? You'll ruin my sermon. Because <laughs> I want to be nice. And God says, I tell you now, if you don't say this, I'm going to get you. <laughs> so I so, said, oh, God, all right, I'll have to say this. Now you're sitting so nice in your seat. You're not perspiring. I mean, the air cons are keeping you cool. I'm talking about the love of God, and suddenly I start speaking about money. Now, am I the same preacher from your last church? No. But God, the Holy Spirit, know what you ran from. So He wants to get you here. So He uses me. I don't like that. But then He uses me to speak to you. And then you go out the door and you say, oh, this church is just the same. No, the church is not just the same. God is after you. And then you think the preachers are bad. No. The, if, if a preacher is anointed, if a preacher is anointed, it meant that he's the voice of God. He's just echoing what God is leading him to. At any time in the service, do you know, God could just stop me and say, someone needs healing here, let's go and heal them. Because I'm open to the Holy Spirit and the flow of the Holy Spirit, that's how I function. I'll adjust my plan and I'll adjust things to accommodate Him. So who's in charge? So I will not leave you, neither will I forsake you, is not a promise, it is a threat. Tell your neighbor, run, 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 run. He's coming after you. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what that is? It is the love nature of God. He's pursuing you and coming after you with a love in His heart for you. You say, no, Lord, I don't want to be here on the altar. I don't want this plan for me, Lord. I want to do my own thing. I want to become a rugby star. God may want you to become a preacher. You say, no, I want to play, become a rugby star. And then you run, 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 and He comes, and He comes, 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 comes. Some of you are in the wilderness. Why? Why are you in the wilderness? Because God hates you? No. It's because He loves you too much. But it's like Jonah. You just keep on running from the plan of God. You keep on running away from the will of God. You keep on going your own way. You're singing the song of Frank Sinatra. I will do my own. How does the song go? I'll do it my way. Thank you for the young people. I'll do it my way. That is a record. <laughs> Ask me. I'll tell you. I did it too for many years. And I got busted until I said, okay, Lord. You understand? And why he chases you like that, not because he hates you. Once he's got your name, once he's got your fingerprints, <laughs> you are on the computer. Everywhere you run comes up on the screen. Wanted. <laughs> so can you hide from God? No. You cannot hide from God. Okay. What are we talking about? Developing a God kind of love. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So Jesus said, 
He says, I've given you now a commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Now, verse 13 is powerful. He says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. All right, turn to Colossians chapter 3. I'll give you a last scripture and we close with this, then we pick it up on Tuesday, right? Hallelujah. Or shall I carry on? <laughs> All the mothers got sad. They're going for lunch. Okay. I'll give you the last scripture, and then we'll pick it up on Tuesday. So be sure that you do not miss Tuesday. Now, the last two times I spoke on, you remember on Sunday and Tuesday, what did I speak on? I spoke on the relationship between the church and the law. You must get the CD. I'll tell you why. Every time we preach a word, every time we teach a word, it's building blocks in your spiritual DNA. And if you miss one, you'll find you'll build, 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 and all of a sudden you'll topple because essential blocks that should have been placed there, you have missed out. So if you miss a service because you really can't get to the service, then buy the CD or buy the DVD and get that in your spirit. Okay? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you miss your meal? Do you miss breakfast? Lunch? Supper? Tea time? Snack time? You can't, listen, can I, let me share this with you before I read that scripture to you. It is bad manners to miss church. It is very bad manners to miss church. If you start missing church, Really, it's not honoring God. Because the nation of Israel, the way the whole nation was patterned with the tabernacle, was centered around the tabernacle, around the temple. Israel worshipped. Your whole lifestyle should be centered around God. Period. So you say, I'll make an excuse. Not to go to church. Pastor will understand. No. I'll tell you I understand. I don't understand. <laughs> to be nice to you, I'll tell you I understand. I really don't understand. Because you say with your mouth, with your testimony, I really sincerely love God. They'll endorse it with your conduct. You got that? If you really love God, endorse it with your conduct. Because this morning, one of the pastors shared, neglect not the assembling together of the saints of God. So you say, well, I'm very busy now, pastor. My business is growing. And at work, they're about to promote me. Okay. Okay. Carry on. You already are developing a recipe for disaster. God will teach you. Because that job is not your God. That pay packet you get is not your God. You learn it, but you learn it the hard way. So sometimes, I don't bother anymore. I just sit down and I smile and I think, okay, I know what's coming for you. I know, I've been there. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So I know what's coming for you. There'll be a whale coming for you soon. Yeah. And then some wives will uh, cover up for the husbands. And some husbands will cover up for their wives. Carry on. He will soon be in another, man's, uh, another woman's arms. Yeah. You drag the guy by his nose and bring him to church. You say, but pastor, that is cruel. You don't understand. No, I just don't understand. I really don't understand how you can miss church, schedule your appointments for some time else. Or you tell the guy, I'll meet you after church, or I'll meet you before church. Or do you know, I have church. I'll see you tomorrow. 
Then you say, wow, but I'm going to miss this money. You know, hey, brother, if it's yours, it's yours. Money will come looking for you. The contract will come looking for you. Try in your own strength, you'll fail. It's bad manners in the eyes of God. <laughs> All right? You say, Pastor, well, I don't believe what you're saying. Okay, carry on. Walk on in darkness. Let me share this. When we want to do things for the house of God, do you think I want to do it because it makes me feel good? No. I want to do it because God has put a vision in my heart to build the house of God. Amen. Now, He has put the same vision in many other people's hearts, and they're all building churches. You understand? We are establishing the kingdom of God. So under whose authority and mandate am I building the house of God? Under God. Amen. Whose blueprints do I have? God's. Why am I dedicated like this here? Do the work of God because God sent me. Now, if you do not receive the plans of God, you've rejected God. If I say to you, I need something from you to build the house of God, I need something to do with the church, you should come by the droves and give. We should stop you and say, don't bring any more money. We have too much. You understand? I said, do you understand? How can you serve God in such a half-hearted manner? You can't. It's the heart. Can I share another secret with you quickly before I read that scripture to you? Your words. There's something that speaks more than your words in heaven. A lot of people speak words. Words are cheap. Talk is cheap. Your heart, the thoughts of your heart speak louder in heaven than your own words of your mouth. God knows you by the thoughts and intents of your heart. You are justified there in heaven by your heart and you are condemned by your heart. So there is an adjustment. If you say, I love God, endorse it with your actions. How can you say, I love God, but you do so little for Him? Talk to me now. Do you really love God? I asked you a question now. Do you really love God? Yes. You really love God. Yes. Ask your neighbor, do you really love God? Yes. Then you ought to do something for Him. Is that not so? If you really love your mom, won't you go and do something today? What will you do for your mom today? Take her for lunch buy her gift, do something nice to her. If you really love God, what would you do? You would do something in the house of God. Come on. If the, if the people of God do enough for God, the preachers don't have to preach about it. It's true. Okay, you got Colossians? All right, this is good. Last scripture, we close. This is very good. Tell your neighbor, this is very good. Okay, you ready? Okay. It says, read with me. It says, let the word... Would you read with me? One, two, three, go. Sorry, didn't I give you the verse? I am sorry. I apologize. Chapter 3, verse 16. Tell your neighbor, I love God. Say, from today, from today I'm going to do great things for God. It's going to shock me. It's going to shock the people around me. And it's going to shock pastor too. And it's going to get God's attention. Oh yeah, you can get God's attention. Solomon did that when he sacrificed 1,000 uh, oxen before the Lord. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon in, his, in a dream that night and said, Solomon, what do you want? He said, Lord, wisdom. He said, all right, because you didn't ask for wealth and money and all of that. He says, I'll give you wisdom. And he says, I'll give you wealth. And the Bible says, Solomon was the wisest man in all the earth. 
and wealthy. Why? Why? He got God's attention. Okay. Verse 16, read with me. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. If you give me five minutes, I'll close now. But I, I need to get, get the scripture to you. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Let the Word, let the Word, let the Word dwell, dwell in you richly, richly. I'll give you another translation. It says like this, it goes like this. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Gaining the ascendancy over all your faculties. Mm. Did you get that? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Gaining all ascendancy over all of your faculties. Boy, oh boy. That is loaded. It means your thoughts are the thoughts of God. Your actions are the actions of God. The way you walk, the way you speak, the way you function, it's breathed by God. You understand? Let the Word of God dwell in you richly, gaining the ascendancy over all of your faculties. Over my mind, Christ reigns. Over my mouth, Christ reigns. Over my heart, Christ reigns. Over my spirit, Christ reigns. Over my actions, Christ reigns. Hallelujah. You know why? Let the Word, let the Word, let the Word of God, let the Word of God. You know what John 1.1 1, 1 says? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It was the Word. Amen. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is what? Quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let that word dwell in you richly. Amen. What word? The word of God. What word? The word in your Bible. The word of God. Let it dwell in you richly. If it dwells in you richly, that means you will function like God. You will have the thoughts of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let the, word of, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, gaining the ascendancy of all of your faculties. See, my feet are ordered by the Lord. My mind's ordered by the Lord. My thoughts are ordered by the Lord. The way I speak is ordered by the Lord. The way I give to the work of God is ordered by the Lord. The things I do for God is ordered by the Lord. Why? Because I love Him. Amen. Mm. Now let me give you the... the I'm, I'm finished now. Give me two minutes. Let me give you the meaning of the word dwell. Dwell means let the word of Christ dwell. Dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ, what? Dwell in you richly. It's to live or have permanent residence in your life. In other words, let the word of God have permanent residence in your life. Well, um, watch. Uh, uh, my mother said, I must pick this one here. Go to church, not go to church. No, you can't do that if the Word of Christ dwells in you richly. So if you are not functioning like that, it means you are lacking the Word. You are depriving your spirit, man, of the Word. Everything translates back to a Word problem. Because if the Word of Christ dwells in you richly, I can't help but to love. I love God, so I've got to be in His house. I love God's Word, so I've got to hear His Word. I love God so much, so I've, when I get up in the morning, I've got to hit my floor on my knees and pray to the Lord. Yes. You, you understand? Yes. I love God so much that I can't help but to do. Well, you go to church seven days a week, somebody asks you, yes. 
when they announced it was time to go to the house of God, I was glad and I rejoiced. You see, you can only get to that point if the word of Christ, let the word what of God dwell in you richly, gaining the ascendancy over all your faculties. The word of God is driving you. Well, let the word of God dwell in you richly. It means the word of God compels you. The word of God burns a zeal inside of you. Your heart's burning for God now. It's like a mom, you know. If something happens to the child, her heart burns inside of her. I, I, I need to get there. There's something wrong with my child. I need to get there. That's how you ought to be. Because God did that for you. So, so that's how you ought to function in love. I've got to get to church. I've got to read my Bible. I've got to pray. I've got to love God. Why? Because the, the, what? the Word of God dwells in me richly. Gaining all the ascendancy over my spirit, soul, and body. It means I function now. Brothers and sisters, if you function like that, the devil cannot get to you. We don't have a devil problem. Can, can, can I just say this and then we close? We don't have a devil problem. Really. We're running after devils. The Bible says we will cast out devils. The Bible says that we have dominion over devils. Christ has given us the power of attorney over devils. We don't have a devil problem. What we have is a word problem. Amen. And the other problem we have in human life today is selfishness. If we can dominate selfishness, what is selfishness? Selfishness basically is putting your interest above the interest of others. That means you operate your whole life being selfish. But you are not selfish. You have inside of you the Word of God. You have inside of you the nature of God. Say, I refuse to be selfish. selfish. Say, from today, today. I'll function function. like God wants me to function. function. I'll function in love. love. I'm a product of love. love. I I cannot help but to love you. Stand to your feet. Say, I cannot help but to love. I have the love nature of God in me. Say from today, I will smile. I will be joyful. I'll be full of love. That's my nature. Say, I will let the Word of God dwell in me richly. No, no, do this now. Say, I let the Word of God dwell in me richly. Mm. That means when you hear someone preaching the word, boy, your ears are now. You want the word. I'm hungry for the word. Say, I'm hungry for the word. Say, this week, there'll be no problems. I'll overcome it with love. Say, there'll be no mountains. I'll flatten it with love. I'll function in love. I'll walk in love. I'll speak in love. I'm a, love I'm a love product. Mm. Turn to your neighbor and say, look at the love of God in me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Some of you are shy, right? Some of you are shy to look at your neighbor. It's okay. Don't feel shy. There's a light inside of you. There's love inside of you. Okay, let me bless you. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for the people of God. I believe you've challenged them, Lord. And I believe, O oh Lord, that they love you with all their hearts, with all their souls, and all their minds. These are your precious people. And because they are your precious people, Lord, you've given them the word. But I pray by the Holy Spirit, you'll quicken the word in their hearts. Quicken it, O oh God, in their minds. That they will function in them. They will practice it. And become doers of the word of God. Say, Lord, make me a doer of the love walk. Say from today, I refuse to be offended. I cannot be offended. I'm full of the love of God. Give the Lord a great hand today. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you this week when you go to work, if you are working, everything will be flattened before you. That's a word of prophecy over your life. God will open doors for you. God will cause you to prosper. God will give into your hands great things. Hallelujah. God will take you upward and higher. You will never go down. God will find a way of escape for you. God is your defense. And because God is your defense, you will overcome. Because greater is He that's in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's someone here as I close. God is telling me to tell you that He's your defense. So turn to your neighbor and say, I am not concerned. God is my defense. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord.